Hey there, it's Chris from Good Roads, and let's get right to it. The snowboard layup failed. So let's watch this train wreck play out, and then we can go take a look at what went wrong and where the project can go from here. No. You gotta be kidding. It's already gelling. How? I don't know. Um, okay. I don't know what to do about this. That's friend. I don't even have resin to finish it. I mean, can you... The resin's set. I can't, I can't. It's, it's can't. set in the thing already? How do people do this? There's steam coming off of it. It's too hot. Oh, wow, I see. It's... Is that why it's set? Yeah. Because it's too warm? I needed to warm it up to stop it from being crystalline. And it's it's just hard? It's not... It's done. But this is, this is it. It's over. Oh, hon. Well, that was rough. I need to say a huge thank you to my wife for being there and trying to problem solve. She was all gloved up. She was gonna help me get the layup into the vac bag uh, when I was done doing it. And she stayed there with me and was being really supportive and wanted to try to help me figure out how I could save it even though the project was doomed. I love you, hon. Thank you for always being so supportive. So what happened? Well, as I was doing my layup, the resin set up on me early and it set up unexpectedly, which means I couldn't finish wetting out my parts to get my board into the mold to press it. And that happened for a number of reasons, so let's take a look. First up, when I went to measure out my part A of my epoxy, it had crystallized. No big deal. I've heard that if you heat it up slowly, it will go back to being a liquid, so that's exactly what I did. Oh boy. All right. I ran the canister under warm tap water until everything was a liquid again, mixed my resin, and started assembling my board. But when an epoxy sets, it's a chemical reaction, and heat speeds up chemical reactions. That's why professional snowboard presses usually have a heating element to speed up the cure time. And when I mixed my resin, my part A was still warm from the heat I put into it to return it back to a liquid state. And that warmth accelerated the cure time of my resin. I made another mistake, which is I mixed a huge batch of resin and I put it all in one big container. In the previous composite builds that I've done, the powder boards, uh, I guessed the amount of resin that I needed and both times I underestimated, which means I ended up mixing batches of resin twice during the layup. This time, instead of guessing, I actually looked it up. It turns out that for a snowboard, you need about 30 grams of resin. So I mixed up a batch of 30 grams and ran smack into another chemistry problem. When an epoxy cures, the chemical reaction is exothermic, which means it gives off heat. If you have a large mass of epoxy curing at once, that cure gives off heat, which just like having the part A be warm will accelerate the cure. So the reaction gives off more heat, which makes the reaction go faster. And since the reaction is going faster, it gives off more heat, which makes the reaction go faster, which means you end up with a runaway cure that sets up in the blink of an eye. Apparently it can even get so hot that it will melt the cup that it's in and it can even auto combust. So in some ways I got really lucky here. So I wanna be really clear with you guys, this wasn't the resin's fault, this was just some basic chemistry that I didn't take into account. Wednesday night after this all happened, I put some very sad pictures up on social media and there was an enormous outpouring of support from the snowboard building community. Thank you guys so very much. Apparently this is a really common issue. And I also got so much good advice. I've got a laundry list of things I can do next time to make sure that it goes more smoothly and that it works more reliably. I can't say thank you enough to the community. The support and guidance has been immense and it has really helped me push through and look at this failure as not really that big of a deal. There have been a lot of comments on this series asking for a cost breakdown of the project, and since I'm feeling a little masochistic and I wanna know exactly how much this mistake cost me, let's take a look. These are all ballpark numbers and they don't include shipping or tax. The poplar for the core from Home Depot cost about 50 bucks. A kit of Smooth-On Smoothcast 320 for the sidewalls, 38. The base sheet material cost me 30 bucks. Enough 22 ounce triaxle glass to make a board was about 15. Binding inserts were 10. The edge wire was eight. Tip and tail film material was 13. The VDS rubber foil, which I haven't talked about in the series, but you put it over the edges to dampen them. Uh, that was about four. West Systems number 105 epoxy and 206 slow hardener, 30 ounce kit. $79. Pack of walnut veneer off eBay for the top sheet was 16. The foam for the mold was 32. And I don't remember how much the aluminum sheet was, but it was probably about 15. It wasn't very much. So that brings the total cost of the project to about $310. 
not as bad as I thought, actually. That doesn't include the cost of materials for making templates or making tools like the edge mending pliers, but still, not bad. As for what this mistake cost me, I can reuse the molds. I only wet out one of my sheets of glass. I didn't touch the veneers for the top sheet, and I only wasted half of my binding inserts which means I ruined $226 worth of material in minutes. <laughs> oh my god. If y'all want to come check out the Patreon, now is a really good time. So I want to tell you guys, aside from the money, I almost feel relieved. So much of this project has gone wrong. The corners of my base sheet were too tight for the edge wire to bend around properly. The core blank wasn't wide enough to cut a cavity for a full wrap set of sidewalls. And then the sidewalls busted out anyway when I went to profile the core. And when I went to repair that with tip and tail fill material, I lost all the accuracy of my core profile. I don't think I had this on camera, but my board somehow grew an inch and a half from the original template I made. No idea how that happened. So, even though I've been given a ton of really good, valuable advice on how I might be able to salvage this build, I'm gonna start over. This is not the board I was planning to make, and it is not a board that I want to finish. I was starting to feel that way long before the layup went south, and this failure gives me an opportunity to go back, taking everything I've learned from my mistakes along the way, and try to make the board that I actually want. I'm sorry, I know you guys want to see me finish a deck, I want to see me finish a deck. I really wanted this board to work out and I'm really bummed about it, but I think this is the right move. And my plan for this redo is to only film the parts of the build that I change or update. That way, I'm hoping I can move really quickly through the repetitive stuff, and I won't have to film it, which means I'll be able to do the work even more fast. And I'm hoping that if I do that, I can catch back up in a matter of weeks and be right back where I was and show you guys how to do a successful layup. You guys cool with that? Would you rather have me redocument the whole thing? I don't know about you, but I really want to finish a board and get riding. And I've got other projects cooking in the meantime as well, so we're not going to be shy for content, so just let me know what you guys want to see. So, one last huge shout out to everyone in the board building community for their support. It really bolstered me and it's really making it much easier for me to get through this failure. And an especially big thank you to my patrons over on Patreon this week. It's not often in life that one makes a multi hundred dollar mistake, but with your support, it's going to be just a little bit easier to recover from. If you guys like the videos and want to pitch in, the cost of materials is probably the biggest way that you can help me keep making good content. I really don't mind all the lost hours of work, but the cost of wasted materials is a little bit harder to recover from, so if you can pitch in, even in the smallest way, it would be hugely appreciated. Thanks for even considering it. So, here we are. As always, if you've got questions or comments, leave them down below. I do my best to get to as many of them as I can. Hit subscribe if you haven't. I'm less than 200 subs away from hitting 3,000, so we'll do a fun video for that next week, and then it's back to more projects. I love having you guys along for the journey. Thank you so much for coming by. I hope you're having fun. And until next time, I'll see you soon. Pour one out for dead homies. I'm not pouring hot chocolate all over the floor. R.I.P. MF Doom.